Iran's new president-elect held his first news conference since winning the high-stakes election. 60-year-old Ibrahim Raisi is a hardliner known for his dislike of the West. And when asked about the prospect of meeting U.S. President Joe Biden amid strained U.S.-Iran ties, the president-elect replied with a simple no. Let's now bring you some highlights of Raisi's remarks. When it comes to Iran's foreign policy, Raisi emphasizes that it will not be limited by its 2015 nuclear agreement with world powers. This comes as Iran seeks to salvage the nuclear deal and get rid of wide-ranging U.S. sanctions that have crippled its economic growth. Listen in. Our people have shown that they resist various pressures and they must know that the foreign policy of our administration does not start with the JCPOA and will not be limited to it either. We will view interaction with the world as an expansive and balanced interaction in foreign policy. Raisi said that the U.S. had violated the deal while the European Union had failed to fulfill its commitments. Next, Raisi said that Iran's foreign policy would instead focus on improving ties with its Gulf Arab neighbors. He also called on regional rival Saudi Arabia to halt all intervention in Yemen, referring to the Saudis' intervention in the Yemen war in 2015 after Iran-backed Houthi forces drove its government out of the capital, Sana'a. And then, speaking on Iran's ballistic missile program, Raisi said that regional and missile issues are not negotiable. This amid demands from the West to include the same in the ongoing talks to revive the nuclear pact. Raisi added that he should be rewarded for defending his people's rights and security. And when asked about his role in the 1988 mass executions of some 5,000 people, he said that as a jurist, he had always defended human rights. Now remember, the U.S. has sanctioned him for alleged human rights abuses during his tenure as a judge. Experts in the West say that Raisi's victory will not, however, alter Iran's negotiating prowess when it comes to the nuclear deal, because the ultimate say on all major policy will continue to be with Supreme Leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei. Let's now tell you a little bit more about the man that Iranians have elected as their new president in the most polarized election. Since the formation of the Islamic Republic of Iran in 1979, Ibrahim Raisi's election comes at a critical time for Tehran. Raisi will serve as number two in Iran as a trusted lieutenant of the Ayatollah. Ibrahim Raisi was born in northeastern Iran's Mashhad. Growing up in a clerical family, Raisi studied under several prominent scholars, including Khamenei himself. Following the 1979 revolution, he joined the prosecutor's office. Raisi is associated with one of the darkest chapters in Iranian history, the mass execution of 1988 after the Iraq-Iran war. He was a part of a so-called death commission that looked over the execution of thousands of political prisoners. Raisi's rise in Iran's judicial system was coupled with Ayatollah Khamenei's accession to power as the supreme leader of Iran. He was appointed as Iran's Attorney General in the year 2014. Raisi then became the custodian of Aston Kurd's Razavi in 2016, one of Iran's wealthiest charitable foundations. In 2019, Khamenei picked Raisi to become Iran's Chief Justice. The hardline judiciary chief is a close ally of the Supreme Leader, and this is Raisi's second time running for Iran's presidential office. Earlier in 2017, he lost his bid to Hassan Rouhani. However, he managed to bag a good share of 15 million votes. But this time, with the vetting of candidates, the Supreme Leader made sure that all the odds were stacked in Raisi's favor. Many even call him the likely successor to Khamenei as the Supreme Leader of Iran. Now, for more on Raisi's recent remarks, joining me live now from Tehran is Sayyid Mustafa Hoshem, a political analyst and editor-in-chief of Iran's Fars News Agency. Thank you so much for joining us. Let's begin our discussion by talking about Raisi's remarks today. When asked about meeting the U.S. President Joe Biden in the future, he replied with an emphatic no. So how will this be perceived? Hello, and thanks for having me. Well, there is no reason to meet Joe Biden. Why should he be willing to meet Biden? He explained it himself. When the U.S. has defied all its undertakings under JCPOA, and when the U.S. is not willing to resolve the conflict uh, all throughout the past 20 years, then why should he be willing to go and meet him? For what purpose? As a matter of fact, in the last two decades, there have been six agreements between Iran and the United States or its three European allies. In all these uh, agreements, based on what U.S. and European experts and officials have stressed, 
Iran has always remained in full compliance with its undertakings, including the undertakings that it had under the JCPOA. But because Iran always thought that the opposite side is looking for a conflict resolution. That's why Iran has a state loyal to its undertakings. But the opposite side, the Americans as well as Europeans, they have defined their undertakings and they have never removed the sanctions because their underlying and hidden and covert agenda has always been containing Iran. They've been pursuing a containment right. strategy and not a conflict resolution. Therefore, what Raisi says is that the U.S. would go nowhere with Iran if they insist on the containment strategy. They should shift towards a conflict resolution approach. Right. Now, the president-elect also said that Iran's foreign policy will not be limited by the nuclear deal and that the focus will be on ties with Gulf neighbors. What's your take on the same? Well, you know, uh, throughout the past two decades, as I just explained, because of American pressures and sanctions and hostilities and their support uh, from the European side, um, Iran's main uh, 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 efforts and uh, uh, look has always been fixed on how to remove the sanctions and how to deal with the United States. So it has paid less attention to other world countries, especially those in the region, the neighboring countries. It has not done enough to expand ties with India, China, Russia, Latin America, and Africa, because it has, fo it has been focused on Dayton with the United States and the West. Therefore, the new revolutionary government is coming up with a some kind of evolution in its foreign policy strategy. It's based on a broad strategy that is all-inclusive. Second, there will be some kind of balance in ties with the world countries, and Iran's look will not be just fixated on America and the West. Uh, and third, Iran will be more active to develop ties with the regional states. And fourth, the ultimate and uh, uh, goal and the priority is economy. Right. Iran's uh, uh, foreign policy strategy from now on will be economy oriented and directed by increasing foreign trade. Right. Now, Raisi also defended his time as a judge, saying that he has always defended human rights. This while there are U.S. sanctions against him for human rights violations. So is there any truth to his statement? Uh, yes, of course, because we'll take a look at uh, what has been happening in the past 20 years in this region by the United States and its allies. They are notorious for their uh, manslaughter in Afghanistan and Iraq, in Abu Ghraib. Uh, in, in the last round of elections, you could see what happened in the U.S. Uh, since the last election in the U.S., they could no more preach other nations about human rights and democracy. And also take a look at what they're doing with their allies. If they really care about human rights, then why have they not done anything with regard to the Saudi crown prince who butchered Jamal Khashoggi, a journalist? Also, they have been backing up dictators for 60 years. That's not what I say. It was stressed and acknowledged by former U.S. Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice at the Senate hearing in 2006. So they do not care about human rights, as Donald Trump said, he and the United States, they just care for economy and their hegemony throughout the world and not democracy and human rights. Right. Therefore, my final question. If, um, if, right. We're just running okay, a little over. short on time. Uh, so my final question for you. How will Raisi's recent remarks affect Iran's relationship with the West, particularly the U.S. and the EU? Well, I, as I just said, if they... Uh, approach Iran through a, uh, towards a conflict uh, through a conflict resolution approach, and if they respect their undertakings under the nuclear deal, then that would be okay. But let's not forget that Europe is not just the Troika, the three European states, Germany, France, and the UK. There are other European states that are in good terms with Iran, that are willing to work with Iran and expand ties with Iran, like Spain, like Italy, and I do believe that there will be some kind of balancing in Iran's relations with the other world states. I mean, uh, uh, rather than focusing on the United States, Canada, and these uh, three European troika, 
I believe from now on we would see more efforts and industrious efforts in order to expand uh, foreign trade and uh, foreign policy with other states that stay outside the domain of these four countries. It doesn't mean that Iran would ignore the U.S. or the, the Troika. No, there is a package, a complicated and detailed package for how to deal with the United States if they stay adamant to uh, complying with their undertakings. Right. Thank you so much for all your insights and thank you for joining us. We on, we on on this broadcast. We on World is One is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news updates on the move.